This video is brought to you by 5,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. WarioWare is a series of games which, on their own, are a series of games. Much like the similar IP Rhythm Heaven, which I have covered on this channel before, the WarioWare games see you following a campaign in which you're completing several stages, and then within these stages you have to complete these quote unquote micro games. Yeah, these aren't your typical mini games, they're much smaller than that. The majority of these micro games are only 5 seconds long, and all you get in the way of instructions is a one word prompt. As you progress through through a certain stage, the games will get faster and faster until at the end where you reach a boss stage. These boss stages aren't super difficult and they have no time limit, but again they only have the one word instruction. Despite these limitations, the games are actually really easy to pick up and start playing. It might take a few tries to get the hang of it and actually get good at the game, but they are super addicting and also resetting isn't really much of a hassle. Again similarly to Rhythm Heaven, WarioWare had its start on the Game Boy Advance. All the way back Back in 2003 we saw the release of WarioWare Mega Microgames Inc. Microgames spelt with a cash symbol instead of an S, of course. It was developed by Nintendo R&D 1 which later became Nintendo SPD who developed Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix for the 3DS. Subsequent games in the series included WarioWare Twisted which was also for the GBA. It expanded on the first game with the gyroscope controls which means you had to twist the console to actually play the microgames. After that was the release of WarioWare Touched for the Nintendo DS, which, as the name suggests, features the touchscreen in its controls. Next was WarioWare Smooth Moves for the Wii. It uses the Wiimote in various different ways to bring movement into the gameplay, calling on a different form to be assumed to complete the various micro games. It even calls the Wiimote the form baton and has these very sensual tutorial sequences. The remote. Control. Hold the form baton straight, with the tip pointing forward. This simple stance reflects one of life's fiercest and greatest sports, channel surfing. After Smooth Moves, there were some lesser known WarioWare titles released. These were WarioWare Snapped, which used the DSi's camera controls to complete the micro games. And then there was WarioWare DIY, which is actually a really interesting game released for the DS. As the name suggests, it allows for the players to create their own micro games. How cool is that? I think that's something that they should bring back into modern gaming. Like, imagine if they did something like this for the Switch. I mean, they did it for Super Mario in the form of Super Mario Maker, so why not Wario? Game & Wario is a Wii U exclusive title which is quite different to your typical WarioWare experience. It's still considered a part of the franchise, but instead of including hundreds of micro games, it features less, more elaborate mini games for you to play. But finally, after a 12 year wait, we finally got WarioWare Gold. This was released for the Nintendo 3DS, and it's basically the mega mix of WarioWare. A grand celebration for the entire series. It features the controls from all of the previous handheld titles. You have the button mashing from Mega Microgames Inc., the twisting from Twisted, and the touching from Touched and also blowing into the microphone. That was also a feature in Touched, although it is much better on the 3DS, sort of. But not only did it bring back all of those controls, it also features an array of remastered micro games from all of the previous titles, including Smooth Moves, which it brought games over from and then reworked them into the new controls because they didn't have the form bat on for the movement controls. Overall, it's pretty good. So WarioWare Gold was a massive success and it helped to bring WarioWare back into the spotlight for forerunning Nintendo games. This eventually led into two Nintendo Switch releases being WarioWare Get It Together and WarioWare Move It. I haven't actually played these games myself so I'm a little unsure on what they're exactly about but to my understanding, Get It Together really shifts up the formula of how the micro games are played. It lets you control a mini version of each different character, each with their own different powers. This really changes the way you play every single micro game. It especially starts getting really interesting when you start playing the combo stages with multiple characters, as well as multiplayer mode where you can play as different characters playing the same micro games. And Mover is quite similar to Smooth Moves for the Wii. This time it uses the Switch Joy-Cons and brings back movement controls. It even has the return of those saucy tutorial segments, except take out the source, they're kind of, they don't really have the vibe as the old ones. Choo Choo 
The voice from above speaks. Hold your form stones in your hands. Keep your arms close to your sides and bend your elbows at a right angle. Your thumbs must be on top. The voice saw that the people were unready and had them brace themselves for anything. This is the origin of Choo Choo, a form to survive an absurd endeavor. They're cool though. Anyways, when I was a youngster, my brother and I used to play WarioWare Twisted on the Game Boy Advance that we shared. However, I wrote my name on it. He did eventually give me the console, but I don't know if I did this before or after that moment. <laughs> I remember we played that game endlessly. I still have the original copy that we played on, and it has the original save data, which I cannot bring myself to start fresh on. They only give you one save file per game, it's evil. <laughs> Ugh, the state of gaming. You see, I played so much Twisted, however, I had no idea that Mega Micro Games even existed, because unless I saw a game on some promotional media that came with a box, or I just saw it at cash converters, I wouldn't even know it existed. However, nowadays, the original game is available on the Game Boy Advance Virtual Console for Nintendo Switch Online, so now I can finally play it. Well, now that I have both of the GBA games for WarioWare, I thought it'd be cool to go back in time and see if they still hold up today. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a drink, and let's dive into WarioWare for the GBA. We start the game at Wario's house. He's watching the news and there's a story about this upcoming game and Wario's like, pfft, making games is easy. I'm gonna make a game. And he buys a computer. Little did he know, making a game is pretty hard. So he recruits all of his friends to help him make the game. There's Jimmy, Mona, Dribble and Spitz, Cat and Anna, Ninevolt, Dr. Krieger, and Orbulon. The gang's all here and the game begins. What a cool title screen. I like this game already. Upon starting, I'm prompted to put in my name. How about this? That's a joke, right? You didn't even give me enough letter spots for my actual, uh, real, totally real government name. So I'll settle for Keeper, my alter ego. <laughs> no question here, just which? Diamond City 20XX. We even get to customize what year it is. Wario's house, again. Wario's bouncing on an indoor trampoline, bounces outdoors, and then falls into a stereo, and alas, the first stage begins. So these are the micro games. We have one single word prompt as a clue on how to beat them, and we have four lives during the whole stage. If we lose all of our lives, it's game over and we have to start again. But not me. Yeah, I did a pretty good job. I made it all the way to the boss stage and crushed it. Wario jumped out of the stereo in his, uh, little form, but it's okay. He returned back to normal. Hey, you did it. Next, it's Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy, what have you got in store for us? Genre, sports. It's Jimmy, baby. I'm sporting big hair and big sports. Leave me 15 cell messages to clear this stage. Hey, hey, keeper, man, get your sport on. Also, I don't know what the hookup is, but I kind of want it. <laughs> We're heading to Club Sugar where Jimmy is dramatically walking through the streets. So you want to play my games, huh? You sure? Okay. One groovy dance later and the stage begins. It was easy going at the start, but even I can slip up and I lost a life at the end of the first speed up stage. The boss fight was a version of Punch Out. Pretty cool. I almost got knocked out though. Once we finished that up, Jimmy showed me a picture of a dog and then said smooth groove. He's so real. At the end of each stage the character who made the games you played will then go to the gelateria. At the moment it's just Jimmy and the owner, Gelato Joe. You did it. You're moving on to the next three man. So now we've unlocked the next three stages all at once and we can complete them in any order we like. I think we'll go with Mona first. Genre strange. Hey I'm Mona and I'm super busy. I'm late again so I've got to ditch 15 cops to save time. Those other games are boring, but not mine. They're strange, but perfect for a guy like you, Keeper. It's another morning at the gelateria and Joe is punching in his timesheet, but Mona isn't here. As she said before, she's running late because of these pesky school children. Miss girl, you need to manage your time better. Oh crap, it's the fuzz. Elephant to the rescue, am I right? A pig took out the second one. Uh-oh. 
wanted level went up. Yo, Mona, you need a pull over. Bars. Rightio, so we need to complete Mona's micro game so that her monkey friend can throw bananas at the cops. I feel like I'm an accomplice in what is now becoming a much more dire crime. She wasn't kidding, these games be kinda strange. Sniff? Will do. Oh, oops, I let this guy burn. How sad. Time for the boss stage. We be hammering. Too easy. Mona successfully finds a pay and spray and somehow still made it to work with just one minute to spare. I wish I got confetti for being a minute early to work. Mona then joins the crew at the gelateria. Get out of here. Wow, keeper guy. You did it. Now we're moving on to dribble and spits. Genre, sci-fi. Hey ya, I'm dribble. And this is my pal, Spit. Survive 25 miles in the cab and we'll get you home. Science fiction's not our thing, but we've made some fine sci-fi games for you, Keeper. Alright, we start off this stage at Diamond Taxi. Pretty gloomy day, but kind of a vibe, am I right? Apparently I'm in the cab and I asked to go to the ocean, so off we go. Some of these games are actually from Wario's initial stage. This does happen from time to time, but they're on one level harder. Just in case you're unfamiliar, each micro game includes including the boss stages, have three levels. Level one is the level that you usually play during the stage. Level two is a bit harder and usually played upon replaying a stage. You see, when you replay a stage, it keeps going on and on and after each boss, the stages level up. Once you lose all of your lives in a rerun, the stage will then end. And there's a leaderboard with three placements. The third and final level is when the micro games are at their hardest. So yeah, some level two Wario stages, but the sci-fi stages introduced Introduced here are pretty cool uh, and hard. You see, I wasn't doing too bad, but then I just fell off and actually got a game over. Oh God. So anyways, I redid the stage and I actually did much better the second time around. I managed to get to the boss stage, which is actually a really cool shmup. It has a few different phases, but none of the obstacles actively attack you. So it's pretty easy to clear the phases. At the end, we shoot off into the stars and the taxi reaches our destination where I shit you not, I have my H H2O transformation. Thank God there was no condensation on the taxi windows. I would have went full fish in the middle of the ride. Dribble and Spitz arrive at the gelateria shortly after. Whoa, hey, keeper, all clear. We misjudged you, pal. No, you didn't. I literally failed the first time, remember? Moving on, next up is 9Volt. Genre, Nintendo. I'm 9Volt, the old school grade schooler. I've got a mad mix of tunes and classic Nintendo vids for you. I'll spin the tunes, you clear 15 of my games. Keeper, these bits of history are the best. I love the play on words there. We are at Diamond Elementary. Nine Volt has just finished school and is heading home for the day. Just like me in primary school, he goes straight to the Game Boy and we start the micro games, which are super awesome. They're Nintendo classics, mostly from the NES, which have been reworked into WarioWare micro games. Remind me to never play F-Zero. I'm not too bad at these though. The boss stage is a game where you are hitting balls which are being thrown by an ultra machine which is an old machine which threw soft baseballs electronically. It was a physical item that was created by Nintendo and released in 1967. It was a Japan exclusive device so if you're wondering why you've never heard of it until now that's why. It was also released over half a century ago so that might also explain why you don't know about it. Right anyways I beat it. 9 Volt is just enjoying some downtime when the GBA SP just drops? Hold up, gotta get the new swag. Maybe stop by the gelateria on the way. Wow, Keeper, you rock. I admit defeat, you win. Next up is just one stage, a remix stage. So this is the second Jimmy stage. He's the only recurring character in this campaign. This stage is exactly what it sounds like. It's a remix. All of the micro games are scrambled between the previous three stages that we just played and they're all starting at level two, just to keep things interesting. Interesting. Jimmy says that we can use the game grid to brush up on our skills. The game grid is just an area where we can play each micro game on its own. It plays out the same as the stages, except it's just the one micro game on loop and you keep going until you lose your four lives. If you reach a certain high score, you get a little flower to symbolize it. The remix stage wasn't too hard. The boss was just the same as Jimmy won, but the next level up. I lost the first time because I wasn't expecting the great punch of death. I didn't get out of the way, but it's fine. I returned 
and I whipped his ass. With that, we unlock the next three stages, and first up in this batch is Dr. Krygor. Genre, reality. Hello, I am the genius Dr. Krygor. I made a miscalculation, and now I have an output error. Urgent. Flush this thing 15 times to restore order. My games are realistic. Keeper, let us begin. Man, he wasn't kidding. He got a pee. So the reality theme seems to just be an aesthetic one, as most of the graphics are just PNGs of fruit and uh, people. They weren't too interesting, to be honest. The boss stage was kind of cool, if not really hard. This evil vase is trying to destroy the earth, so we have to teach it a lesson. Go piss, girl. Not that much. Oh god, he just flooded his entire lab with duty water. Oof. Tough break, buddy. Good thing this bird was here to catch you. Another patron for the gelateria. Very good, indeed. My keeper theory was valid. Yes. Okay. Next up we have Orbulon, who is an alien. Genre, IQ. Hello, life form. I am Orbulon. My travel device is malfunctioning. I need to gain 15 yards of altitude to escape. My games can be taxing, especially to craniums the size of Mr. Keepers, but I'll include more time units to give you a break. I think he just roasted the size of my brain. Orbulon is just chilling in his spaceship, but then a meteor sticks to it. And so these space bunnies drop an escape pod to help him out, and now it's up to us to complete the micro game so that Orbulin can escape. So far, so shit. Turns out I have no IQ because I am down to one bunny left and I still have the whole stage left. It's okay, I ended up getting the hang of it and Orbulon gives us double the amount of time to complete his game, so it wasn't too tricky once I got into a rhythm. The boss stage was like an RPG fight, except you had to select the options that made the most sense. Again, IQ. We defeat Hungra and Orbulon is lifted to safety. And very very immediately rejected by the space bunnies and banished to planet Earth. Ah oh well, at least he landed at the gelateria. Bzzzt. You have cleared. Does not compute. <laughs> wild. The final stage in this set is cat. Genre, nature. Hi, I'm cat. My little sis, Anna, asked me to use my ninja cuteness and save Prince Keeper in room 25. We think flowers and animals are neat, so we put them in our games. So this is my castle? Dope. Oh fooey, I'm about to get robbed. Ninjas to the rescue. Uh oh, ninjas not to the rescue. Anna sent a letter out to her sister cat, who then traveled far and wide. Seriously, this is like a week-long hike. Anyways, she barges into my castle and begins to storm it. We have some more of Wario's initial games, which is cool, but the nature-themed ones are what I'm here for, and they're super dope. Probably my favorite set so far. They're challenging enough to keep me on my toes, but not too easy or too hard. And also, they just look nice. The boss stage is a vertical version of Doodle Jump, to put it in its most simple form. I thought it was really neat. At the end of the boss, we jump into a sewer and that helps Cat kill the skeleton and save the day. The skeleton literally falls apart like a little big planet enemy. Okay, who wants gelato? Prince Keeper, you are the victor. Impressive. There's one more remix stage left, again hosted by Jimmy. This time it remixes micro games from Orbulon, Krieger, and Cat. It's pretty much the same deal and the games are at a high level with the boss stage being on level 3. Okay, time for the final stage, Wario. John anything goes. Keeper, who knows how you got this far, but good luck getting through the rest. Open 25 files. Man, that's a lot. There are all types of games in this Wario collection, and they're the best in the world. Wario has had it. His computer is giving him all sorts of grievances, and now he's really done it. He threw it over his head, and it landed on him, and he became one with the laptop. These stages are all very hard, and the micro games from his friends stage at the beginning of the game are all at level 3. I also got another game over. Okay, boss stage time. Oh, great. Okay, okay. Again, again. It's not too tricky of a final boss. You wouldn't believe it by the way that I'm playing, but it, it's not. Not compared to future final bosses in WarioWare at least. It incorporates a few different game genres. 
you have platforming, shmup, and metroidvania, I guess. Maybe that's a stretch. At the end, we have to run, dummy. Wario stops on his own, so you gotta mash A, otherwise you will die. But finally, we completed the boss for real for real. Wario escapes the laptop and goes to the gelateria. The whole gang is celebrating the Wario game. Three weeks have passed and the game is a hit and Wario pockets all the cash. Mona calls him out for being a quote unquote greedy punk, which is fair, and Wario decides to make a run for it by flying into outer space. Good luck. Unfortunately for him, Krieger was going for his morning soar and the two collided, causing Wario to fall into the ocean. The end. So that was the very first game in the series, WarioWare Mega Micro Games Cash Money Symbol Inc. I think it definitely still holds up, it was so much fun to play it, and if you have Nintendo Switch Online then I recommend you play it. There is still a whole lot of bonus content and I barely scratched the surface on the whole array of micro games that you can play. And next up we have WarioWare Twisted. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this game has gyroscope controls, which means you have to twist the console in order to play the games. Now you may be wondering, how on earth do you do that? The Game Boy Advance does not have a gyroscope in it. Well, this is how. It's out of focus, I know. I can't turn my autofocus on, otherwise it will just always focus to that fake Sprigatito evolution. Or Pikachu with very confusing anatomy. <laughs> So the actual game pack contains the gyroscope sensor up the top here, and honestly it's a pretty incredible innovation. As a kid I never actually understood the ins and outs of it, so I just thought it was that one big game that I had. <laughs> so Twisted, despite being released on the same console as Mega Micro Games Inc, is a whole lot more advanced. They pretty much took what Mega Micro Games brought to the table and improved it in every possible way. And they also added a whole lot more content into the game. I am really excited to dive in and show you guys this game, so without any further ado, let's get started. We begin yet again at Wario's house. He moved to a new pad by the looks of things. Wario be playing some games, but he isn't that good which makes Wario mad. This calls for a joyride. We end up at Krieger's lab which also looks like a new lab. Makes sense, he flooded the other one with his toilet water. Wario asks Krieger to fix his GBA which he does by throwing it in the washing machine, to which it then reproduces into hundreds of consoles with no buttons. How are we meant to play this? Oh, you twist it. Okay. Mona and Ninevolt seem to be getting the hang of it, which Wario then sees as a business opportunity, of course. It's time to make some games, for the second time. Enter WarioWare Twisted. I really love the title screen of this game, because if you twist the console then the letters become scrambled and you get these alternate titles, which is just a really cute detail. Anyways, let's play WarioWare Twerped. We kick things off with this little infographic that shows us how to play the game. Don't worry, I won't be spinning around my room, I'm not LEX. Now we do have a few options here in the menu, but right now we're just gonna focus on the story. Now as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is my childhood save, and no, I am not deleting it just so I can play the story mode from scratch. So sorry for the spoilers, but they're pretty much the same cast as the first game. Let's start with stage one, Wario. You want the Wario, so here I am. This is my smorgasbord sampler. I got rid of the time limit to make things easier on you lazy crumb bums. How rude. Back to Wario's house. This mouse broke in and Wario's not having it. As he was trying to destroy it, the clock flew up out of the house and landed on top of Wario. Oh dear, can't catch a break can he? As Afro mentioned in the little flavor text before the stage, Wario's twisted stage features no time limit so we have all the time in the world to complete his games. We don't even have any lives because there is literally no way to fail them and so so far this is a really good way to get introduced to the controls. I'm literally just twisting the console, no button inputs at all. So we have a boss stage now which was really really easy. After all that's done, Wario kicks the clock and it lands on the mouse and then fuses with it. Amazing. In this game, the characters end the stage by going to Club Sugar to get their groove on. Normally it would fill up with the cast one by one, but I've completed the campaign, so we'll just skip this part with each stage. I just wanted you to see what replaces the gelateria in this game. Whoa, looks like you passed my stage. Not like it's hard or anything, it's gonna get a lot harder. Fair assessment, Wario. Moving on to Mona. Ciao, Mona here. My games require perfect 
precision and petite spins. The controls are simple, but you'll need just the right touch if you want to win. Mini spin. To beat my stage, you'll need a little spin and a lot of skill. Mona has left the gelateria and has started working at Mona Pizza, which I'm pretty sure she doesn't actually own or is even the manager of. I don't know, I feel like I read some lore about that once upon a time. Next door is rival company, Pizza Dinosaur. They're not as popular as Mona Pizza. I thought I called Mona Pizza. Oops, I dialed the wrong number. Sorry. Ugh, tough break, Pizza Dinosaur. We help Mona make the pizza and she sets off, but it's no normal drive with Mona as we established last time. Pizza Dinosaur is here to sabotage her delivery. Not to worry, Joe is here and Mona's crew is here to deal with all of those pesky employees. All the while, this is being broadcasted live on TV. This couple are sick of it though, so they'll switch the channel to Mona's singing show where the stage takes place. Of course. These games see the return of the bomb timer. They're still fairly easy and it's Mona, so they're also strange. Her whole thing is that you only need to do little short spins to play her games. The boss stage is cool, we're controlling a helicopter car that we have to get to the other side without hitting a lightning bolt, or landing in the water. I stuck the landing, of course. Mona defeated Pizza Dinosaur and the couple got their pizza. Thanks Mona, you're the best. Congrats, you cleared my stage, but you still got a ways to go. So Jimmy is up next. Oh yeah, this here is Jimmy T's stage. My games are larger than life and you'll need to spin big to win big. Hold on on tight to your Game Boy Advance. It's weirdly meta. Big Tipper. Bust out your biggest moves for these games. You're gonna sweat. Jimmy and his parents are having a nice dance party at Club Sugar. We also see the return of the cell phone. Mona's games had a spinning small, but Jimmy's games are go big or go home. Looks like I'm going home. I was kind of expecting another punch out stage for the boss, but instead we're just climbing a spiral staircase. I mean, it's cool, but not what I expected. I beat the stage, Jimmy and his folks dance until the club closes and they never eat their dinner, that poor bartender. Oh yeah, your moves were a killer. You cleared my stage, hope it made you sweat. Now we have Kat and Anna. Anna gets included this time, yay! Also, I'm actually still not sure if it's Anna or Anna. I say Anna personally because together their name makes the word katana, which is a sword because they're ninjas. Hi, it's me, Kat, the cutest ninja in Kin kindergarten. Okay, I didn't know they were in kindergarten. <laughs> Our games are just a button, but don't think that makes them easy. You'll have to be fast on your fingers to beat them. Tap out. Just cause you only need one thumb to play our games doesn't mean you won't have your hands full. So today we're at Diamond Knoll where Cat and Anna are on a field trip. Cat fucks off a bunch of wasps and then they have to run away from them, which I'm not helping with. They end up in this cabin where the diamond troll is ready to rumble and tumble. Not on Katana's watch. This stage is different to all the others because you don't have to twist, like at all. They're all a lot easier than the rest of the game stages in my opinion. Nothing really gave me any trouble. The boss stage is extra weird though. It says to turn the screen, but I never did as a kid, so I'm not starting now. We're fighting these boogers, and then eventually we fight a small nose followed by a big nose. I imagine this is the troll's nose. We claim victory and knock out the troll, and after all that, we have to go back to facing our first problem, the wasps. Remember those? Lesson learned. It's easier to take down a troll than angry bees. Oh, they were bees? Okay, they look like wasps. Next up is Jimmy's folks. Much like the subsequent Jimmy stages from Mega Micro Games, this here is a remix stage, and it's actually the only one in the main game. They're all in level 2, I believe. I'm actually gonna skip it because it's nothing new. The boss is the same as Mona's, by the way. So that means now we're on to Dribble and Spitz, who isn't mentioned for some reason. Howdy, Dribble here. Me and Spitz got loads of games all about spinning and pressing A button. We listen to three stations on my cab's radio. You should check them out. Steer clear. You gotta spin and press the A button in our stage. Hey, it beats driving stick. So we find our
ourselves on Interstate 310. Dribble and Spitz are on their usual rounds as taxi drivers. Spitz changes the radio station and then the taxi breaks down because of it. So now we have to do micro games to repair it. These games require twisting combined with pressing A. So there's a little more that goes into them. It's funny because these are actually some of the hardest games considering they all have two sets of controls, but they are very simple controls. The boss has us pumping a rail cart while running from a boulder. This kind of gives me final boss from the first game vibes. We have some obstacles in the way and we can jump over them by pressing A. After that fiasco, the taxi is fixed and our favourite cab drivers get back to work. And the taxi is now a spaceship, apparently. They pick up an alien and take it to Club Sugar. The end. Way to go! You should try driving a cab! You got the moves down. Now it's time for Dr. Krieger. Hello, Krieger here. Dr. Krieger. In my games, I found a way to manipulate the very power of gravity itself. It sounds more complicated than it is. Just try it, and you'll see. Oh yes, you'll all see. Mwahahahahaha. I d I swear Krieger's not actually evil, why is he talking like this? Gravitator. Spin the earth. Then you can boogie up down there. So we're back at Dr. Krieger's lab. I really like these gravity controls. It's probably the biggest shift up in the formula since Cat and Anna's stage. They really require some fast thinking too, and are actually quite challenging. It's a good way to enter the late game. In the boss stage, we have to tilt the earth itself to ensure this guy here doesn't fall to his death. He must remain upright. It looks upside down on screen, but when you're playing it, you're actually slowly turning the console so that the ground is always at the bottom of your view. So you're seeing the upside down version of what I'm seeing here, basically. Dr. Krigor built a robot for flying in, but hits an eagle and falls on his duck toilet. It's okay, history has a way of repeating itself, luckily. Impressive, you cleared my stage. Did you enjoy my new invention? I did. Wario Watch is next up. This is the second Wario stage. This stage breaks up the formula once more. The games, like the first stage, are endless and have no timer, but now there's actually a universal timer in the corner. Instead of lives, we have seconds. You can spend more than 5 seconds on a stage, but if you lose all of your time in the corner, then the game is over and you gotta restart the stage. Once you complete a stage, the timer goes up a little bit. The quicker you complete the games, the more time you'll end up having, and it caps at 30 seconds, so you can't have any more than that. Oh, and the boss stage is the same. Easy peasy. After that is Orbulon. Greetings, I am Orbulon. My stage demands patience. I've given you more time to think about your actions. My games are a break from the hectic hurly-burly of your modern human existences. I like how he's not a robot in this game, honestly. Time warp. My games allow twice the amount of time to complete. It's been some amount of time since Orbulon's last outer space crisis. He has now recruited the space bunny to be his minions. Love that. Hate this part though, just saying. Eventually the whole fleet falls asleep and now they're all in danger of getting sucked into a black hole, so Orbulin tries to activate the time warp but he forgot the damn password so now it's my problem. Much like the first game, Orbulon stages give us double the amount of time to complete but they're not nearly as hard. I was struggling in his previous stage and this here was a cakewalk. In the boss stage I just have to twist this elevator system that everyone can safely cross. It's pretty easy, but it does get trickier in level 2 and 3. Also, this boss was remastered for WarioWare Gold. Pretty cool. Orbulon activates the time warp just in time, and the ship ends up getting swallowed by space monster Gabriel. That is his government name, I promise you. Gabriel spits out the spaceship, and once again, Orbulon spirals down into Earth, and the space bunnies are free to go. Astonishing! Human ingenuity never ceases to amaze me. The penultimate stage is from Ninevolt. Hey, uh, Ninevolt here. You know me. I'm a huge fan of Nintendo games. So that's what my stage is all about. I've mixed all of my favourite games to give them a new spin. Even games you thought you know are gonna look totally twisted. Spintendo Classics. I've put a new twist on all the old school NES games. Take them out for a spin. So we're starting things off at Diamond City Elementary. 18 Volt is the new kid and he has a passion for music, which everyone hates unfortunately. This makes him upset until 9 Volt approaches him and says that he liked his music, which cheers him up. 9 Volt then invites 18 Volt back to 
his house and the two play some video games on his NES. We have a lot of classics in this remix of Nintendo classics such as Metroid, Excitebike, Kid Icarus, Donkey Kong Jr and the boss stage Super Mario Bros. I was having a lot of fun but I really made a fool of myself at the end. 9V and 18V continue to party into the night until he gets told off by his mom. Oof, embarrassing. This is real life footage of me playing WarioWare in bed late at night as a child. He even has the GBA SP. I love that they have that little bit of continuity from the past game. You rocked it old school, but next time you'll have to beat me. So I guess we were playing 18 volt at those games. <laughs> Finally, we have the last stage in the main campaign, Wario Man. My new look is pretty super, huh? It's only a matter of time before Bollywood comes knocking down my door. I better get an agent, but if he thinks he's getting 10%, he's... Oh, you wanted an explanation of my stage? <laughs> Tough luck. Spandex challenge. These games are even more super than my last. We're tuning into Diamond City Broadcasting. Wario's new game is an overnight success. It's reached mass production, baby. Uh oh, Wario. Oh god. Stop going inside of objects. God damn it, the underwear on his head gave him a complex and now it's up to us to take down Wario Man. This is by far the hardest set of games. They take a bit more time to figure out. I'm not doing doing very good either. In fact, I got a game over. Perfect. It's okay, I reset the stage, got to the boss, and now it's time for Wario de Mumbo. This is a really fun stage, and it's the original Wario Dance Company boss, just saying. You have to repeat what these dancers are doing, and then repeat to the same rhythm. It's hard, but definitely doable. Wario's complex gets out of control, and he literally rockets into space and turns into his final form. His friends are in a spaceship, of course course, but unfortunately the security system kicks in and destroys Wario's mech suit, causing him to fall down and crash into the ocean, thus ending the WarioWare saga on the GBA. The post game gives us some new stages, just like it does in the previous title. They're remix stages, so I won't be playing them, but basically they just offer some hard challenges, and if you get a good high score, you'll unlock some extra goodies. The Spindex is the new version of the game grid. You get a silver crown if you unlock every micro game from a stage and you get a golden crown if you reach the high score goal in every micro game for a whole stage. I've unlocked everything and I've got gold on Mona. A new part of this game are the souvenirs. I have almost every single one, I'm missing like 5 total. You get them by replaying the story stages and beating bosses. There's a huge variety of them such as this timer, size monitor which is sensitive to your gyroscope control, astrology map, and a globe that actually has New Zealand on it. This is the good timeline. What's my fortune today? Shiny penny? Fantastic. This looks inappropriate. <laughs> this snake gets stressed the harder you spin the console. I used to see how far I could stress it before it, uh, dies. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> this game is so unserious. I freaking love it. Anyways, that's it for WarioWare Twisted. It's my favorite one of the two games for sure. It has so much more content, so if you have a GBA or a DS with a Game Boy slot, I 100% recommend getting the game for yourself. There's hours upon hours of content here. You will not be disappointed. Well, those are the first couple of games in the WarioWare franchise. Twisted still has a chokehold on me, being one of the very first games I ever played on the GBA. Probably my very first Nintendo game, to be honest. I played it before Pokemon. I also really enjoyed Mega Micro games, and honestly I wish I had that as a kid as well, cause then I'd be so much better at the game. <laughs> and again, if you have any so, then please go get the Game Boy Advance Virtual Console because you definitely need to play this game, at least once. Perhaps I'll also look into the other games in the series and make videos on those too. If that's something that you think you'd be interested in, then just let me know in the comments. If I do play gold, however, then I will need a 3DS capture card. So that's something to consider for the future. The problem isn't the availability, they're actually for sale right now, but I just can't get one in New Zealand because of how difficult it is to ship any kind of console out and back into the country. The easiest way to do it is to actually get the capture board sent here and then do it all myself, which I did did do for my DS capture card, but it took me 9 hours, 
it was a mess and I didn't even have to solder this one so I think I would crumble with the 3DS installation. <laughs> Anyways that is all for today's video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it then please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. I see you. I see that most of you aren't subscribed to my channel. Have you played the WarioWare games? If so, let me know which ones that you've played in the comments below. I'd love to read about your experiences with WarioWare and have some discussions about it. So yeah, I hope you all have a really good rest of your day and I'll see you all in the next one. See ya.